Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Craig and this is Grow Paradise. And this week on the Grow Paradise Nursery has been insanely busy. We've got a big plant fair up and coming this weekend. The Grow Paradise Seed Club is set to renew, so I need to get all of that sorted. And the online sales have been phenomenal. So thank you so much for the support. So today's video is just going to be a one take wonder where I'm going to rack my brain for all of those Latin names and I'm going to show you some of the weird and wonderful plants that I'm actually taking to Abbotsbury Subtropical Gardens Rare Plant Fair. Now if you're local to Dorset by all means come down and say hello and spend some money. If you're not this video is going to be great for giving you some ideas for plants that you can add to your own patch of paradise, your own tropical style garden, because there's plants here that I haven't actually featured on the YouTube channel at all before, and they've not even made it to the shop. So there's some really special and new things that should be exciting to all of us. Okay, so we're gonna start inside of the greenhouse, which at the moment is an absolute feast for the eyes. So let's pick out some of the plants I'm gonna be taking to this plant fair, and let's keep it sensible, we'll go in order. Now down here is some really special homegrown plants. This is a tropical lobelia, lobelia bambuzetii, which is a very, very large growing lobelia, which has these long serrated lance shaped leaves. And the leaves actually develop a pink midrib on the underside and on the top. Now this is this year's seedlings. So I'm gonna take them um, and they can be grown on by keen enthusiasts, but that is a rare plant that you don't see that often. And it's definitely one of these lobelias that's first popularized by Mike Clifford. Now next to that are some very young Puya. And this is Puya alpestris, the sapphire Puya with the really, really lovely blue flowers. Now these are half hardy for me, I'm in zone nine. And for a lot of people, these plants that are commonly called the sheep eater can be hardy, provided with good drainage. And after five or six years, you'll get really incredible flowers that are produced high on a flower spike with little branches coming out from the flower spike where birds in the wild would perch so that they can then pollinate the flowers. Again, more homegrown. This is a really, really nice foliage plant. This is Bohemeria nivea, which is in the nettle family. Now this is the first time growing this plant for me, grown from seed and they've grown incredibly well. Now these were actually part of the Grow Paradise Seed Club. So everybody who's a member in that club has managed to grow lots of these plants cheaply from seed. Now, obviously I've got more plants here than I need to keep myself. So these are going to the plant fair. I absolutely love them because of these large, really nicely veined and textured leaves, but also for that soft velvety white underside. Now this plant is said to be completely hardy in the UK. It's a first time for me. It's something you don't see on the market that often. So I'm really looking forward to trying a couple of these outside through winter and seeing if they come back. Now, just to the right here is some Musa sicamensis Bengal tiger. Let me grab one. So you can see they're just starting to get those red tiger markings, which earn them the name of Bengal tiger. And these are in nine centimeter pots, absolutely bursting to get planted out. And you know what banana plants are like as soon as you've got them into the ground, they grow phenomenally quickly. Now Musa sicamensis is just behind Musa basdu on the hardiness scale. So for most of the UK, it will survive. Um, if not the stem, it will survive from the root and reshoot in spring. I'm gonna plant one of these out in my own garden, in the Grow Paradise garden and we can experiment and see how resilient these are to cold winters, and hopefully we don't have a winter this year like we did last time, which got down to minus 5.2 degrees Celsius, which is well below our average. Now, at the back there are our Aeonium Vella. Now, almost like I've planned ahead, I've got one here for us to have a closer look at. Now, these Aeoniums are really nice. I love Vella, it's a cultivar that's been selected for its freely branching habit. And you can see how many rosettes have formed here. Now, if you're a gardener who loves to grow specimen plants, then Vela is perfect. Get it into a bigger pot and you'll get a really architectural succulent. If you're a gardener who loves propagation like me, then each one of these rosettes will give you material for taking your own cuttings. You can have a go at propagating these plants. And I've done a video all about that that will guide you through the process. I'll put a link up on screen for you. I'll just put that back in there. Now, something that may have been catching your eye 
is these beautiful Canna Cleopatra, named after the Egyptian queen because of this dark purple streak, like the markings she has in the corner of her eyes. I love these cannas because the foliage is absolutely stunning on its own. You have this rich green tropical foliage with these chocolatey maroon streaks coming through them. Sometimes the leaf can be completely green and other times it can be this chocolatey colour all over and it's just such an attractive plant before it flowers. Some of them have flower spikes emerging and I'm hoping we'll have some of these beautiful flowers by the time the plant fair comes around because not only are the leaves bicoloured, the flowers are bicoloured as well. They come in shades of yellow and red on every single flower. So you get to enjoy so many colours just from one plant. Now something that's been keeping me very busy with online sales are these Colocasia. Now let me grab a label. Colocasia Redemption. Bred by Brian from Brian's Botanicals in 2016. These plants are only just becoming available for retail. I've got some of the first into the UK. So these have been incredibly popular and rightly so. Um, a companion of Colocasia Redemption is Colocasia Pharaoh's Mask, which develops really nice ribbed green leaves. Again, I'll grab a label to show you. Where are they? There you go. Colocasia Pharaoh's Mask. I actually did a video talking about these recently and I had to get a second batch in before they sold out because I've had a lot of people asking about them and I think these should be really popular at the plant fair. Like I say, some of the first into the UK, they should be reasonably hardy and these characteristics, the colours and the shapes and forms are completely unique to Colocasia. So really, really great work, Brian, from Brian's Botanicals. I love these plants. Now something else, it's getting a bit dark down there, so let's brighten the screen up. Oh, my Enceti ventricosum morellii. I've got quite a few of these. This is the last one left in the greenhouse. A bit of leaf burn on some, but I've got some much nicer ones that will be coming to the plant fair. And underneath the bench here, again, let's get some more light in. There we go. It's this really nice Colocasia mojito with the beautiful mottled leaves. And again, quite variable. I found that the more sunlight these colocasias get, the better the markings are, and the leaves get quite big. I've got one planted out in my own garden. It's been planted out for about six weeks now, and it is absolutely thriving. And you can see these are in partial shade to keep the humidity up, um, but as soon as they get a lot more light, the colors are gonna become really bold, and these leaves will get much, much, much bigger. Over here, sort out the lighting, there we go. Is another Bohemiria, another plant in the nettle family. This is Platyphyla. Now, this one featured on my YouTube channel last year. I grew one in my own garden and it's planted out now and coming into flower, which will be followed by plenty of seeds so I can grow more of these. This has beautiful, big, round, plate-sized leaves, hence the name Platyphyla, with that really nice, typical Bohemiria textured leaf venation and serrated edges. I absolutely love these plants. And it took almost zero degrees in the greenhouse this winter. So the one I've planted out will be a real test to see how they survive in the UK when planted out. And just here, I've got a couple of Musa Valentina. Now these again should be relatively hardy in the UK. This is the pink flowering banana. I'm gonna take a couple to the market and I'm gonna keep one for myself to plant it out in the Grow Paradise Garden so we can all see how it grows throughout the season. And hopefully in a couple of years time, we'll see one of those bright pink banana flowers. So now we're just outside of the greenhouse on one of my propagation benches that is out in full sun for most of the day. And here are a selection of plants that have been potted on to get a lot bigger, ready for the plant fair. Now this one, you can see down here is Baconia frutescens. A bit of a rarity. I'm unsure whether I'm gonna take this one because it's gone off on the wonk a bit. I might just keep it for myself. It's not up to the Grow Paradise standards. We've got some lovely Echium fastuosum here. Unlike your typical Echium pinanana, which is that tall single flowering one, these are branching Echiums and they're actually perennial. So you'll get multiple flowers year after year, so long as they survive winter. These aren't quite as hardy as pinanana. Um, I'd give them a good sunny warm spot with good drainage and that will give them the best chance. 
Up here we've got a Saccharum officinarum rubrum, which is one of those purple sugar canes, which is really lovely. I've only got one of these at the moment. I've got a couple more that I might take, but definitely one coming to the market. So you'll have to get there early if you want one of these. It's a really nice tall growing grass-like plant with this magenta streak through the leaves and lovely burgundy young foliage. Just behind there, we've got Solanum lacinatum. Now the common name is kangaroo apple. And I really like this half hardy, semi evergreen shrub because of these deeply pronged leaves, almost like a trident. You get three prongs and as the leaves mature, they change shape. So you'll get quite a lot of shape variability. Now this is in the Solanaceae family. So you get typical tomato or potato like flowers, little purple flowers followed by orange egg shaped fruits. Now the fruits are poisonous, they are not edible, so do not eat them, but they do look really impressive and they add some late season interest once the flowers have passed. Down here, it's quite recognisable. Eucalyptus gunnii, a really nice fast growing plant. I'm going to be taking a couple of these to the plant fair. Um, for those of you who love fast growing evergreen plants for a bit of privacy and have enough space for them, give one of these a go. Now, this is a fuchsia boliviana, and um, I've got one in flower in the Grow Paradise Garden at the moment. This was a cutting off of that. You can see, being in full sun here, it's a little bit leaf scorched. So I'll move that into the shade, but it's perfectly happy and it'll grow away. Clearly they love partial shade and you get really long red and white flowers, followed by seed pods. And if you can save the seed, they are really, really easy to grow from seed. Just here, which looks like a dandelion that's snuck into my selection of plants is a dandelion but it's an exotic tree dandelion Soncus fruticosus which has these really nice lance shaped leaves with deeply serrated edges and it will flower with your typical dandelion type flowers i'm going to take a couple of these to the plant fair i think these should be reasonably popular because you don't see them that often another plant that mike clifford introduced me to and they're really really great for a tropical style garden just here we have three or four Impatiens oricoma cross bicordata, which is that Impatiens hybrid from the islands around Madagascar. Really, really free flowering. Um, they do best in partial shade. These, although they're tucked behind this fence, so they do get a, a bit of relief from afternoon sun. They're actually doing quite well. And you can see there's a few flower buds here. So it's getting ready to bloom just in time for the fair, which is exactly what I asked them to do. There's a lovely, interesting leaf here from, let's brighten it up, Geranium madarensi. This is a really beautiful plant. And for me, it's evergreen and hardy down to about minus two. The leaves will get enormous and they are really, really striking and architectural and they're held high on thick, succulent leaf stems. And in its second or third year, you'll get this huge orb of magenta, pink, typical geranium flowers, but produced by the hundreds in one go. And it's really, really striking. This is a plant that I haven't actually grown in my own garden it is aloe striatula. I think its name may have changed, but that's what I can remember. It's a hardy aloe that's easy to root from cuttings. Um, it's one of the hardiest aloes we can grow in the UK and it has red hot poker like flowers. You'll get a spike at the end of each stem um, with tiny tubular flowers packed tightly in shades of orange and yellow. It's a really, really great plant. And just in front of that, what looks like palm tree seedlings is actually a tropical grass. This is Ceteria palmifolia. Palmifolia obviously meaning palm-like leaves. And it's a really nice broad-leafed grass with this thick, deep, corrugated texture now they're covered in tiny hairs, a bit like pampas grass, so you don't want to run your finger down them in the wrong direction. Now, although this is a tropical grass, and many people will tell you it's not hardy, as you start speaking to people in the UK that grow tropical style gardens, they've actually found this plant to have a degree of hardiness and have planted them out. So I've planted one into the Grow Paradise Garden. I will leave it out. Remember, my garden's on heavy clay soil, so if it survives the water logging, of a garden based on clay soil, we know it has really good hardness for the UK. 
There is a new cultivar of this, which is purple and magenta pink. I can't remember the name of it and I can't even get hold of it, but when I do, I'm looking forward to adding that to the Grow Paradise Nursery. We'll move along a bit more. Lovely, sumptuous, dark leaved plants. Now these are tender annual bedding plants. They're actually sweet potato vines. The, these are ornamental varieties that you can grow to add contrast to a tropical style garden. Now we've got one here, which is Sweetheart Jet Black, Ipomoea Sweetheart Jet Black, which has these heart shaped leaves and they are notably darker than any other cultivars. And they're really nice for adding contrast to green leaved plants. You see there, if you planted that underneath the Soteria grass, what a beautiful contrast you'd get. And this one with a really nice leaf shape is Ipomoea Sweet Caroline Purple. Now it's called purple because the leaves have a purple sheen, but this is also an Ipomoea, a sweet potato vine that is most likely to flower and it has pale purple flowers as well. Now we'll move along a bit more. I feel like I'm losing my voice. I'm going to be taking a selection of affordable small bromeliads as well because if you subscribe to the channel you know that I love adding bromeliads to the branches of the trees because it adds that real rainforest vibe to any space. So this is Nigellarium striped fireball. This is a Vresia and a cultivar called Era with really nice purple banding over the leaves. This is another Vresia with a great name, El Dorado, and it's in flower here. So we're going to get some nice small white flowers emerging from these colorful bracts that are emerging from the center of the rosette. And then a Guzmania here with this orange flowering center. Again, the orange is the leaf bracts, not actually the petals. So the bracts stay colorful for a lot longer. So they add a lot of interest. Now this Guzmania is a cultivar called ice cream because of the cream variegation through the leaves. And it's actually a lot more shade tolerant than other bromeliads. A lot of bromeliads will lose their color when you grow them in shade. The variegation on this plant stays just as striking as it is now, even when grown in full shade. Now underneath this layer, I have to brighten up the camera a bit, are our ferns. Now I'm gonna take some of this Asplenium angustifolium, which is a relatively hardy form of our native heart's tongue fern, but this one has a really nice corrugated leaf texture, which I think adds a lot of interest into a tropical style garden. And because it's potentially evergreen in mild winters, it's gonna give you something to look at year round. Now, just beyond that is our Australian jungle brake fern. Now these young plants of Teris umbrosa are just establishing into nine centimeter pots, but I found this plant to be completely hardy for me. If it gets cold like it did last winter, the foliage is frosted off and I cut it back, but it regrows quickly from the underground root zone as the weather warms in spring. And I may, depending how much space I've got on the way there, I may take some of this Dryopteris atrata, a really hardy fern which reliably comes back. And to be honest, I think all ferns look absolutely great in a tropical style garden. They mimic that rainforest and that jungle look with ease. And possibly some Brunera Alexander's great. I mean, I love shade plants. They thrive where other plants struggle. And this selection just shows what a variation you can get for these tough conditions. Okay, so tucked just behind the greenhouse, we have bench number two. Now, I might be taking some of these Plectranthus. This is a cultivar called Silver Shield with these soft silvery leaves that are covered in a thin layer of hair. It's a really nice plant, nice for contrasting against darker leaved plants like this Colocasia, and you get lavender colored flowers in late summer. This is tender, but it's easily grown from cuttings. So if you do have one, just take some backup cuttings in autumn and you'll be absolutely fine. Behind that are my Abutilon seedlings. Now these featured on the YouTube channel a few months back where I sowed seeds from plants that were open pollinated in my garden. So I was growing pink plants, orange plants, uh, red, yellow, um, different shapes and forms. And these seedlings where they've been open pollinated are unknown hybrids. So you could have something very, very special here, but because I don't have enough space to grow them all on myself to see what color and shape and size the flowers are gonna be, I'm gonna have to share them with some of you. 
and I hope that if you get something special, you share a picture with me so that I can show everybody else what the cultivars and what the seedlings grew up to be. I've also got this variegated one, which is Pictum thomsonii, Abutilon Pictum thomsonii, which has flowers similar to Abutilon megapotanicum, but it has these mottled leaves, which again, add a bit more interest, especially in a shady area where Abutilons often thrive. Just beyond that, I have my sea of Colocasia. I've got a few different cultivars here. So this one, which is new to Grow Paradise this year, is white lava. Now it's an, a Colocasia that gets a white heart here. And as we get more and more mature leaves, this white coloration will just bleed out from the leaf veins outwards to the leaf edge. A bit like lava, hence its name, white lava. We've got black coral here, which is a really, really nice colocasia. Matte black, jet black leaves, again, that contrasts really nicely against green colored plants. I think in a tropical garden, having contrast is one of the key things to give you that kind of bold, exciting planting scheme. This is a popular one. This is colocasia blue Hawaii, on account of the blue wave markings you get between the blue leaf veins on the leaf. Now, just like with so many other exotic plants, the brighter sunlight it gets, the stronger these markings become. And I've got a good amount of these. I really like this as well because the underside of the leaf is a nice color and the leaf petiole, this leaf stem, is a dark purple, so it brings out this leaf coloration. Just beyond that, I'm gonna take Colocasia Maui Gold. Now, when these are en masse, you can't really appreciate how bright and golden the leaves are on this elephant ear plant but when you see it next to other cultivars, you can see how it pops. And me talking about contrast, let me show you what it looks like if you were to plant black coral next to Maui gold. That is a pairing from heaven. Let's put this one back before I break it. I've only got two hands, one for plants, one for camera. Now just beyond that, is another set of special plants. So I'm going to be taking this. This is a seed-grown Pseudopanax arboreus, which is an, a half-hardy evergreen shrub from New Zealand. And I've actually got five or six of these. This is the biggest. There's another one down here and a few smaller ones, look. So I think these are going to go quickly. So if you're after one of these, you'll have to get there early. I'm going to take a couple of these Australian oven wattle, Acacia previssima, the name almost escaped me then, which is this really unusual evergreen acacia that has whorls of quite rigid leaves around the stem and it will grow into a small tree. They're really good for small spaces because unlike other acacias, they don't grow into giants, but you still get loads of those yellow pom-pom flowers in spring. I'd say these plants won't flower for a couple of years, but get them in the ground they'll soon mature to the right size where you'll get those blooms. Now, just here is a leaf that everybody asks me about all the time. This is Brassiopsis mitis, and it's quite a big plant. You can see, if I come around, brighten the camera up a bit, the size that this one's got to. Now, I'm unsure whether I'm gonna take this one to the plant fair yet, so if you'd like to see it there, let me know. Um, it's not gonna be cheap because these plants are very hard to come by and they're in high demand. Now just below that is a sea of Fatsia japonica variegata. Now I love Fatsia japonica. They have such lush green leaves. They are tough as anything, so they look good all winter. But I really like it when you can find a form that has a variegation. Now the variegation on these it's dropped away slightly, so these will have a good price tag on them. But you can see if you get more shade, you get these white patches on the leaves. So I'm gonna take all of those. There's a couple of Fatsia polycarpa buried in there as well. And down here is something completely new to the Grow Paradise Nursery, and I'm definitely keeping one of these for myself. This is Amorphophallus atroviridis. Now that atroviridis, references the purple leaf edge 
Look at that striking. It's almost like a neon pink around the edge of the leaves with this satin textured leaf underside. And it doesn't stop there. They've got these really nice mottled leaf stems. Now these are a bit like that saromatum that I grow. They die back to an underground part of the plant in winter. They'll produce a smelly flower early in the year and that will be followed by one of these single leaves that comes out. This looks like lots of different leaves but this is just one leaf made up of little leaflets and it's just a really odd unusual plant. I'm going to take nine of these to the fair and I think these will be very very popular as well. Hopefully you enjoyed that list of tropical and exotic style plants and if you're local to Dorset I look forward to seeing you at the plant fair and if you're not I hope you took note. If you didn't I will put a link to the list of plants featured in this video on the Grow Paradise social website which is linked in the top corner and in the video description. Now if you found the video useful please hit subscribe it's the easiest way to support the channel and I will see you all in the next one. Mm -hmm.